Welcome everyone, this is Snoo, and you're tuning in to, I think, round two of the Zero Investment 100 Maps Farming session. That video, if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you go see it. I tried to make a statement to the community that, yes, you can farm to your heart's content, zero investment. All you gotta do is unlock most of your atlas, uh, a few favorited slots, and uh, pick up the Wandering Path Keystone, and you're well on your way to a zero investment lucrative farming strategy. A very black and white approach to farming, though it's not the way I typically do things, but again, had a very distinct purpose for that video. This time, in round two, we are going to uh, level it up a little bit. Uh, gonna go into some of that gray area, be a little more intelligent about uh, the farm. And so while the previous strat was excellent for solo self found, of course, or anyone who's straight up allergic to trade, this one is gonna require a little bit of prep work. Very, very minimal, laughably small amount compared to some of my other videos. You can see a dump tab here, and we're working with a couple of compasses, not even four because I'm still only on two watchstones, by the way, and then a bunch of trashy scarabs that nobody cares about. And then a few maps, and just for the TLDR, I'll give it to you. Basically what we're doing compared to last time is we're going to be cranking up the pack size, doing whatever we can to crank up the pack size because it has huge ramifications on the altar farm itself. It's more than just increasing loot, increasing the monster. It actually double dips in a sense that it increases the number of altars that you spawn in a map, uh, which should further increase the number of monsters, which further increase the number of rewards for each subsequent kill and subsequent altar. It has a compounding effect. So it's a huge deal if there's any way for you to do that. And since Exarch Altars is the primary farm here, that's how we're going to do it. Let's take a look at, uh, well, first of all, the favorite system is still the same. Actually, I think I had City Square only at one and Crimson Temple at five. I don't think it really matters, but I, I went ahead and put two on here. You can see that I'm still missing eight points from the major boss invitations and the remaining two pinnacle bosses. So this is a very mapping friendly setup. Again, streamlined straight from the Wandering Path Atlas completion strat. And we're diving into Exarch Altar Farming at T16. Adjacent map drop style can be seen on some of this stuff over here. And we're also going to include some heist materials as well as expedition. Now, expedition and heist are optional. You don't really have to do that if you don't want. I definitely recommend heist because any build can do it. And it takes no extra time. It's just free currency, basically. Uh, but to be fair, heist does not benefit in any way from... Increasing pack size, whereas Expedition does, so I'm getting even a little bit of extra value from that. I have taken the uh, number of adjacent map drop nodes required to reach the 100% cap. On that, I have also taken maximum duplication chance, 37% chance to duplicate map drop. That's how the over-sustain uh, comes into play, over-sustaining maps. Of course, the Exarch stuff with a whopping 40% increase Exarch pack size, same as last time. Uh, let's see, we got all of the chance to increase a smuggler stash to drop, chance for extra smuggler stash and blueprints to drop. Same, similar, or similar story with Expedition. I did mess up Expedition uh, Atlas last time, I guess I took a few wasted points. But anyway, clean that up. This is a better looking Atlas. And maximizing the chance for, at, uh, for Expedition to spawn. Honestly, it's close to 100%. It's pretty crazy. And then as well as the quantity of vendor refresh currencies, they're the high value currencies. I had to get a little bit of essence to pathing to get into some very, you know, simple, uh, low investment magic finding, I suppose, if you would. Going on there. And growing hordes, wandering path, singular focus still in play. A few extra points on the top part. This time I have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six points in top wheel. And it is a good idea to take this top one for this strategy doing here. I'm not doing it partially because I don't really have the point because I didn't fully unlock my atlas. And part of it is because uh, the build that I'm playing, it gets a little rough to put that much, especially because um, there's a mop, there's a map mod that I have to deal with uh, where the monsters have a chance to avoid elemental ailments. And if I have more than like six or seven points in here, that becomes 100% doesn't uh, suddenly and uh, suddenly bricks even my ventors or not my ventors sorry my uh, vinctor uh, you are let's see shock nearby enemies during effect that works even if enemies have a 98 percent chance to avoid shock so i don't like going over that threshold for this build if possible 
So that is why it kind of looks like this. But yeah, flexible uh, slots on the top here, the top bar, by all means. Fill it all the way out. Get even more loot if you want. Now we'll take a look. And I did mention that it's all about increasing pack size. So growing hordes, 5% increased pack size per scarab. We are going to be putting scarabs in every single map. That's why they're all loaded here. How much did it cost? Well, less than a chaos per scarab. I was able to buy them easily on bulk trade. The bulk tab, I, was, I think I bought 100 at a time for around 80 or 90 chaos. So that was a quick four trade done there. As far as compasses, I went to TFT, the Forgotten Trove. And that is a place that not everybody knows about, but it is a separate Discord. And there, there's a place there, there's channels there where you can buy the compasses. I highly recommend buying cheap compasses over there that way because you can buy them even cheaper in bulk than you can uh, on trade if they are cheap compasses in this case they are nobody wants the increased magic pack size compass nobody wants it uh, for any kind of you know real major farming strategies and it has extremely high weighting so people who are constantly rolling these compasses are just trying to get rid of them I mean the, the practical throw them away I suspect some people actually are throwing these away uh, when they roll onto them so they're happy to give them to you for any price, basically. Similar story with the unidentified pack size. These are the only two compasses where you can increase the pack size. Now, unidentified one is a special stipulation. The map has to be identified. Well, how do we get unidentified maps? I mean, they can drop straight up rare and unidentified, and I'll run it that way. Or if you corrupt them. So that's the other big change to this one. We are going to be corrupting the maps. Valing each and every map. And there's basically uh, a few different possibilities out there. One, uh, the map mods stay exactly the same. B, they change, but uh, still similar uh, quality map, four, five, or six mods. Or it becomes unidentified, which means I will use this compass if that happens. Or it goes eight mod corrupted, in which case we just get a ton of extra pack size anyway, and it's a more challenging map than usual. So higher risk, higher reward. And then there's a bonus fifth option, which is pretty cool. And why even Valorbing these things means you don't really lose money is because occasionally it will turn into a Val Temple, which is worth over 20 chaos apiece when that happens. So we'll just save those. We'll see how many of those we got. Uh, once again, I got my Exarch progress to 16 out of 28. And funny story, the thumbnail that you saw, that not actually from this, uh, this run. That was from the map I did before when I was at progress 15 out of 28 i dropped the insane cat card so i i, I kind of broke my rule of thumb and actually just put that as a thumbnail because it's just ridiculous you know i've been farming these for a while got the major jackpot card so now you know it's real <laughs> that was a real thumbnail it happened one map before this session boohoo but i guess you know <laughs> if we count it you know it's going to skew the results so i'm especially interested to see the results on this one uh, especially because poe stack which uh, we're going to go down into now now that it's loaded properly. We're going to load dump tabs A, B, C, D. And if you recall in the last video, they had a nice breakdown of all the currency that I earned. And 10 divines of it was the bubblegum currency, basically the XR currency. That was with the zero investment. So I'm very interested to see how many, how much currency of bubblegum currency I get this time by actually putting in some investment to see how much higher I can get, we'll kind of get a sense of if it's worth it or not. All right, so I have a few remnants of corruption in here too because I come across essences and it feels bad if you come across a purple essence and can't hit it, you know, for a chance for a specialized essence. So I'll go ahead and throw a few of those in there. Three maps to start. These compasses are properly valued. Yep, they're about four chaos piece. So it's basically five chaos per map on average. Each scarab's a little less than a chaos. And then the compasses, you know, I'm running the magic pack size every time. I'm running the unidentified pack size only on unidentified maps. Really comes out to about five chaos per map on average. That's it. And so we're starting with an investment value of 2.9 divines. And then when we're done, we'll go ahead and fill this all out. See where it comes out to. We'll keep track of things in the back end, the time and everything. I, I'm not sure if it'll be all in five hours or maybe a little bit longer this time. We'll find out, but let's get started. Do I take the can't take reflect damage compass if you Valor rolls into that? That's, that's a great idea. It's really smart, actually. No, I typically just throw the map away, so... You know, I might start doing that, especially since I have a separate. Uh, wow, you know, that's one of the best, uh, one of the best chat comments I've seen in a while. Actually, seriously good 
idea there. Uh, you should do that. I should also get uh, the anti-reflect compass in there as a backup in case I brick my map into elemental or physical reflect. I'm going to start doing that now. I'm not going to do that for this run, but uh, I'll keep that in mind. So we're going to start with the, the magic size. Magic size. Put these over here. And I'm going to show you this map and then this map. I want you to see the difference here. I'm going to load the scarabs in. And yes, somebody did comment that, uh, in fact, you can do something like this. You know, I could run the map and it will take all of those scarabs, even though they're the same one. True, it does work that way. Or they could be all different. It's fine. So we're only running one compass. And you can add compasses. If you got four watchstones, you can add more compasses if you want. I'm not going to mess with it. Again, just one little scale up from the top. We're still going to be running just the uh, quantity there. And here we go. Same build, explosive concoction. Been fun. And you might not be able to tell from here, but already the pack size is much higher. You can see it there on the right. Oh, I'm supposed to be rushing the boss here. A little bit out of order here. That's fine. Uh-oh. Could very easily die here on this ghosted boss, especially right now. Oh, we're okay. I actually thought I was going to die there. Oh, yeah, the gambler card dropped. I'm going to track gamblers this time, too. I'm curious to see uh, how many gamblers I get and kind of figure out, you know, some sense of how often or how rare the apothecary might drop in this ridiculously low investment strat. I can promise you it's going to be hundreds of maps on average to see one. Uh, but it is dropping on this map as well as uh, Crimson Temple, so I'll just have to divide the number by two to get a sense of what it should be. Why do I run City Square over Crimson Temples? I'm just doing it to, for the self-sustain, map self-sustain. So I have to run an adjacent map with it. I don't want to, you know, be buying maps. I want to be selling maps, not buying them. Fractured Crimson Temple map. Okay. Random. Uh, started with a Tugin. Nice little bit of currency here. So this was, ironically, an awful map. It had zero altars. How, how do I get unlucky? That happened last time, too. I got zero altars. So even with all this increased pack size, still got zero altars. Keep in mind, this is 49%. It's actually 89% increased pack size for uh, the Eldritch Minions because of the Wandering Path Atlas Strat. I guess we'll let's see what that is worth. Ooh. Could it be? No. All right, just uh, picking up final stuff. I actually really do like City Square. I'm getting quite used to it now. Uh, we already made some pretty good, made out pretty well there on that with a lot of extra maps that we wouldn't maybe normally see. I mean, it's pretty fast, clear. Either way you look at it. Does the overloaded circuits work with wandering paths? You're talking about that keystone? No, it does not. I heard it does not. Okay, uh, on a disabled tab affinity. And a, yeah, okay. All right, so here's the second map. This Crimson Temple this time. Watch how big the pack size is on this one. Gonna be a little bit bigger. Any luck? I mean, we're just getting started. Wow, look at that. What does I say? 67? So over 100%. And yeah, I mean, the average is gonna be somewhere around 100%, I guess. And the increased pack size. Immune to fire damage is probably okay. I still do a lot of lightning damage. So hopefully we get to see some serious altars spawning on this one. Oh yeah, I took that uh, the tattoo that makes the the guy come and help. I don't know if it's worth anything. Can anybody in the chat tell me if the tattoo is actually worth anything? The one where the guy comes and helps you. 
Oh, okay. This is nice. And vulnerability shrine. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time. You know, I think I'll go do that expedition right now. I got 35 seconds. I finally got an altar. Oh my god. Pretty easy when you can't take damage. Val Smite go... Damage looks way higher. The damage is uh, a little bit higher. My my build nut my I never stop improving my build at least a little bit. That's so weird. I found two unique leather heavy belt or leather two unique leather belts in two maps. That's actually really really weird. I'm not magic finding, but a couple of gambler cards too. Expedition lock home card. Whoa. Whoa. Getting loot. Actual loot. Shitty expedition, though. Why? One tenth. Sounds like you're gonna gamble it all the way up, right? That's what you gotta do. Oh! I saw that card earlier this league. G Academic. Corrupted Jewelry. Corrupted Jewelry? Uh, cor corrupted item, I guess. It'll be corrupting jewel. Whoa! Dare I say, this is uh, kind of a good map. Yeah, the doctor could drop. I'm pretty happy with that. God. Unique jewelry. Yo. This map, this is a tryhard map. All at once. We were pretty dry there for a while. And, uh, altars hit big on this map. Wow. It, and currency. I got a lot of currency too. Hmm. Mm, am I dead? 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 No, I'm not dead. Oh. Easy clap. Oh my god. And Rampage is still alive. Whoa. He can't keep getting away with it. Corrupted item. Corrupted item. I'll take a corrupted mage blood card, please. Do it. Do it. I probably should have done currency dupes there. I don't know. There was a chaos sword. <laughs> oh my god. What even happened? I don't know what's happening on this map. No. Oh. oh shit. 600 chaos damage. It's like, oh, that's not good. We are we're on life support. Moving life support. I need to leech let my ass off right now. <laughs> Can't stop hitting stuff. Uh, uh. 
I don't even have time to lose. Oh my god, the enduring fiery gen. Oh. <laughs> He's still alive. How oh, is he still alive? Wow, 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 I gotta like eat small spoons. Oh, what took Takahuma touched in here? I got an infinite leech off of the God Touch monster. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, ah! that off my sc oh my God, Tane's trying to kill me here. Fuck you, Tane. That shit out. Oh. Uh. Hmm? <laughs> that was so random. <laughs> okay. So myself. Is Grand Design worse? No, no, it's not necessarily. It's just different. I'm not going to do Grand Design video this league, I don't think. What? What the heck? Zero. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is. That's that's not supposed to be what happens in this kind of farm, but okay. I, there was a ghost there. I, it must have been ghosted. I think it was ghosted, guys. The game's trying to tell me something. We've got to get on this ghosted strat. One mob gets ghosted. Boom. God touch loot. Actually, the ghost is dry. I don't think any uh, rares get ghosted because the ghost can't affect rares. So, I, I don't even think rares can get touched either. So, I, I think it's only like magic and normal mumps. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just the nature of that play style. I'm going to try to come out with some kind of low budget magic finder that weighs a shield this league, and I know it's going to be pretty squishy because it'll be low budget <laughs> but oh well hey whoa winged reliquary scarab calm down calm down wing scarab not even mfing jeez no reliquary scarab in the map whoa whoa might use that later We're talking about KB Blast. I have just started looking into it because I'm interested in making a shield based build. Double logbook. Jeez. <laughs> oh, is that nice? Nice rolls. I made some money on this map. Good morning, everybody. healing. That was a nice altar. Whoa, yeah, got a little crazy here. Yeah, let's dupe some stuff. I'll take the minus max res. 
got negative chaos res now, but I'll handle it. Dupe is a good idea in this case. It's kind of rare that I do that, but... Oh my god, how many altars is this? Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, it's getting wild. Getting a little wild. Let's take a break and do an expedition. Where? this guy like super fast you end up off screening the ghost every time what kind of build are you using The ghosts have 90% reduced damage taken when they're engaged. And it, it re gets uh, lowered pretty quickly, you know. So as long as you... like, It, it was actually kind of hard to straight up off-screen a ghost. Oh, Tainted Orb Fusing. Nice. I think that's kind of a misconception some people have. So what usually happens is, you know, the ghost, you know, there's evidence of a ghost. You start seeing some touched monsters or you see it on the corner of the screen. You're just not paying that much attention to it. And then you just keep playing like normal without really registering it. And then it's dead. Like, and you never even really targeted it. It's just dead like a few seconds later. Uh, I think that's actually the reality of it. So what I'm, the reason I say that is I think in this case, if ghost busting is a real strat, people are going to change the way they actually approach a map. They're going to they're going to be on high alert for ghosts. They're going to be looking for them specifically. Nobody, nobody's used to doing that. Like nobody does that anymore. So, if we completely change how we think about it and it's high on our radar, I, th I think most people will figure out a way to stop killing them off screen. Here we are. We're ready. Thank you for sticking around to see the results of low investment Exarc farming with heist and expedition. It was much rippier. <laughs> Maps were a fair bit harder. And for that reason, primarily, it took me a little bit of extra time to do 100 maps. So not quite in five hours this time, but close. So we got the dump tab. It definitely looks a little fuller than it did last time. Let's go down and see what we got. Uh, oh, by the way, mainly just one. Uh, the biggest jackpot item i guess was a taste of hate as far as uniques especially nothing outstanding unfortunately again no major divination cards uh, were found on this uh, only in the map before this with the, where the thumbnail was <laughs> only only map zero map zero dropped an insane cat go figure uh, okay let's move me down here we go we got dump tabs A, B, C, D. B, C, D are empty. Only A has anything there. We used all the scarabs. We used all, all the compasses, as a matter of fact. Kind of worked out nicely. And there it is. Okay, so the number is 27. Now, I did just go back and check. I mean, that's why the YouTube uh, was up there for a second. I, I did go and check exactly what the results were last time. So to, to remember to compare... Uh, the first major bit, bit of information I want to give you is that, uh, and I'm so glad that I verified this, Chaos Orbs to Divine Ratio was 149 to 1 uh, when I made the video two days ago. Today, it's 197 to 1. So, last time I found 25 Divines, 24 Divines worth of currency. This time, 27 worth of currency. Uh, that's, uh, that's not even taking into account the investment which is mean basically it was the same about 24 again yeah 
yeah actually so we'll we'll calc this out right now real quick here we got uh, two five one i want to see the exact amount here divided by 197 okay six okay all right so our gross here and we'll go through everything in a minute 26.76 minus 2.9 okay that's our investment so we got our net i mean this is this is basically exactly the amount of currency i net profited uh by divine orbs last time but again there's way more chaos way more chaos involved uh i suppose how much more chaos well basically this much so about 1200 more chaos is involved uh just because of the increase in value of the divine orb which does kind of speak to the strategy losing some power just because it's not farming raw divine orb but i mean that's going to apply to almost every strat out there uh divination or divine orbs per map okay so we'll go back to this number here 100 0 0.24 which in this case is about 47 okay kind of important because last time it was 35 so it was, last time it was 35 chaos per map net profit with zero investment this time it's about 47 chaos per map net profit so you can see a bigger profit a definitely a bigger profit margin even though again the divine orb number came out to basically the same and it took me about five and a half hours to do this one so do that divided by 5.5 and yeah as far as divines per hour a little bit lower okay so last, last one I think was 4.7 divines per hour. This time it's 4.3 divines per hour. But again, that representation, that difference in representation is more, is beyond offset by the divine orb jump. So again, uh, I just wanted to reiterate that because I know if I don't mention that, some people are going to wonder, what do, you, what do you mean? You made less currency on this strat than you did the last one? No, uh, it's just the divine orb jump in value is more than offset the increase in currency we made. But this is kind of the important number. 35 chaos per map. Net profit last strat, 47 chaos per map, net profit this map. And I think in both cases, in about the same degree of RNG. So let's go down and uh, see where the breakdown is. Uh, just see the list here. We got Awakened Sextant on top again, 148. Definitely a bigger number than last time. 320 chaos, that's a bigger number than last time. Uh, you know what? I just realized I forgot to count Forgotten Tomes. Just curious what that is. Forgotten tone. So I selectively counted these last time. And I think I counted them at like maybe 15 chaos. So that's a little bit of added value that wasn't included. So I'm not going to, it's not so important. That I'm going to go and recalculate everything, but uh, just so you're aware of that. They're 20 C now. Yeah, they're going up a little bit, huh? All right. Uh, Let's see here. I should probably make sure that noise doesn't come again. Let me. Okay, there we go. All right, uh, we see some logbooks. I definitely got more good luck with logbooks because there's much bigger pack size, so more more of the monsters spawned in each expedition. I died a little more often, but hey, you know, pretty nice. Look at how many maps I have. Holy cow! What, what in the world? Crimson Temple, 60 maps self-sustained, 72 city square. That's way higher sustained than before. So I mean, that's just a product of putting way more monsters on the map, getting even bigger uh, sustained. But I am actually kind of surprised at just how many extra monsters or extra maps I got compared to last time. I can't remember the exact number, but it looks like the maps are around the same value anyway. I don't think there's hardly any change there. I did get one Divine Orb. To be kind of expected, I mean, 100 maps of this level of pack size juice, I would honestly expect a divine. Uh, so that is one difference from last time. Uh, a lot of the currencies there. All right, so we'll just kind of scroll through here. Snapshot if you want. A few uh, scarabs. I even got one winged scarab, which is pretty rare, but could happen. So there you go. Now the breakdown here, this was uh, an important bit of info I wanted to see is the currency number. It's about the same. Uh, but again, 
kind of need to take this number times 1.25, don't we, here? 10.7 times, because that's the difference of the value in divine orbs. So, you know, about 25% more currency, bubblegum currency, was found, represented again by the same number of divines. Uh, but yeah, the maps, last time it was two divines of value, this time 3.5 divine orbs of value and over sustaining maps from the strat. Uh, then artifact stuff, it's, I can't quite remember where everything else laid out in value here, but this probably the rest of this looks about the same. So there you go. Roughly 25% more currency. Uh, unless you're specifically looking at divide ops. <laughs> okay. So I highly recommend, uh, doing the strat the way I did it here. Let me go back and I think we can do a little bit of fun stuff here. I didn't do this last time, I didn't really think about it, but I usually do a sort of gambling session with a little bit of Valor being some of the uniques, but I guess I only got two here, so pray for a nice uh, corruption on this. Wow, I actually hit two in a row. I don't think... These are probably worth anything, but I don't know. We'll see. But the maximum energy shield is kind of interesting. Maybe, maybe not. Definitely not one of the jackpot ones. Oh, yeah, a few of the Val, Val maps. Only got two out of all the corruption. A little bit unlucky there, maybe. And, you know, while we're here, we'll do, what, 13 stack decks? Okay. Now, this league, I haven't gotten any kind of valuable item from stacked decks, so. You saw it here first, whatever is about to happen. Nothing. Nothing's about to happen. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad that Gambler card dropped because I actually forgot, almost forgot to check that. That was one other thing I wanted to check. So it's around 650 Gambler cards per Apothecary. I think I'll go down here again. Um, that's not going to count the last one I got. No, not that here. 33. All right, so the gambler drops on City Square, too. So I actually got to divide that number by two. Uh, I suppose we'll round it down. So 16. Effectively, I got 16 gambler cards and 100 maps. In 50 maps, sorry. In 50 maps. So, yeah, I guess... Uh, let's see how many Crimson Temples it would take. So 32 Gambler cards in 100 maps for this strategy. It would be even less for the Zero Investment. Oh my god. Uh, so it's around 650. Uh, and, and this is data I've talked about in previous times. This seems a little off, but according to this, this this data I have right here, it, soft data is suggesting I need to run about 2,000 Crimson Temple maps to get an Apothecary drop on average with this strat. I didn't think it was that high. So I, I think that may be some bad RNG on the Gambler card drops. Uh, I was assuming around 1,000, though. Around 1,000. Uh, or maybe a little less. But anyway, that... Goes to show the power of magic finding. When <laughs> you actually magic find, make a real magic find strat. Um, yeah, so if you think you're going to Alk and go in Crimson Temple and get an Apothecary easy peasy, well, gonna, probably going to be there a while. And, you know, there will be people who get it on the very first map that they run, of course. Uh, but I do think that's a, math is a little off. The sample size is just too small. It's not good enough. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess it's around a thousand maps with this kind of level of choose. I don't think it normally be any more than that uh, because I've talked to a lot of people who out can go from Den Temple and strats like this. Okay, so there we go. Final thoughts. I definitely think if you're willing to. Spend a tiny amount of time on trade and prep up the stuff here. You should do it. You should definitely do it for this strat. If you're just kind of diving into it and you're, you're one of those players who really despises risking a bunch of currency, 
in a strategy or you know a leak start situation don't even have the currency at the start which is a lot which is where a lot of people are right now of course uh it's a terrific way to jump start your build because you know i was able to completely fund my explosive concoction build this way you know i'm now around 25 maybe 30 divines invested into it and it, it's absolutely blasting the maps you would have seen you I mean you saw it in the in the highlights of course an uh, expedition was a bunch of terrific fun uh, do uh, still squishy die often um you know getting a bunch of altar mods on the minions definitely makes it rippy and finally tattooed myself up a little bit and got more than just what was it like four four chaos res that helps for this strat <laughs> definitely uh but yeah highly recommend this i i don't think there's much to do beyond this and if some people would ask well what about four compasses in each map what should you do maybe there i mean there are definitely some options uh you could add additional smuggler stash you can get the compass for additional smuggler stash probably would technically be more currency uh, per hour if you did that i don't know the cost of that compass yeah it might be good i know some people take the seventh gateway and just put smuggler stashes straight onto the map somebody talked about that i don't know the cost of it but that might be a good thing too uh, i don't think there's a lot you can do expedition wise uh, but you can always just shuffle the strats around. You can do Harvest instead of Expedition. You could just drop Expedition and put the points back in uh, more map, higher tier map drops or the, the top row with increased effect modifiers, non-unique maps. You could do that instead. You don't have to run Expedition. You, you saw the spread. I mean, not a huge amount of currency that I earned was from Expedition, as a matter of fact. Uh, most of it was from raw bubblegum currency. And then maps came in second. Comment says, I uh, got inspired by you. I'm running MF Poisonous Concoction with full uniques. Very fun. That sounds uh, that sounds pretty experimental too. Speaking of MF, uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and tease it here. The very last thing I'll say on this video, fully intended to do no investment all the way to Mage Blood, and then, you know, tiny bit of investment here in this strat to show you guys. Um, but... It has come to my attention that uh, from Snap, you know, one of the Magic Find OGs of the community, that the ghost busting strategies, where you take this uh, keystone, Speaker of the Dead, I talked about it. I made a whole video on this before the league came out, saying I was excited to hear about it, but you know, I figured I'd wait it out, see how the group players identified it. Wasn't really expecting anything major to come out of it. I thought it was a decent chance it would be a nothing burger. Well, it turns out it's not a nothing burger. In fact, it turns out, according to my conversation with him, it's, uh, it might be the next biggest thing since Sentinel League or Palandra League. It might, it might actually, we might be sitting on something of the same scale as that, as far as a, an actual Magic Find League. So... What do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to drop what I'm doing and I'm going to uh, start exploring that. I, I I know what kind of content I'm known for. I, I'd be kind of dumb not to do that. So normally I wouldn't go back on a specific strategy I was uh, planning to do and declared that I would do. But I, I've farmed around, I mean, counting what I farmed today, I got around 120, 130 divines probably in liquid across all... Uh, all tabs and you can tell that through poe stack by the way which is pretty nice so i could probably almost buy a headhunter but uh you know what i think i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna focus on low investment mf strategy uh, i bet that would help the community out if i came up with a nice low investment magnifying strategy so that means look forward to a change in direction towards magic find especially with the ghost busting stuff on solo gameplay which is going to be hard to find from any other content creator i and I'm willing to put money on that. But I'll do it. I'll make it happen. I'll pick up the torch. So we're going to we're gonna do some ghost busting solo style. And figure it out. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Or if you're excited to see some magic find stuff. Uh, back to the cemetery. Cemetery sounds like a good place to go. With the divine orbs coming up the way they are. I bet you that's where I find my home. For the, the next week or so. Here we go. Things are ramping up. I'm excited. I want to log out of here and edit this video, get it out, and then I'm going to start putting a Magic Find character together. See you on the next video.